you. Thank you, Toastmaster. Fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, this speech is a bit different. This is more how to be an improv speaker. And basically, I've said this before, I'll say it again, I am not supposed to greet everybody, but I always do, so I'll be guilty for that as long as I'm here. I want to thank you for coming today, and I want you all to have a great morning today. I want to start it that way. Next thing I want to say is, I want to thank Lewis. Lewis really pushed me to start and go to a contest. The contest was to be table topics, and table topics was to be impromptu speaking. I didn't even know if I was going to make it out of the club. I was fortunate enough making it out of the club, went to the area. I didn't know if I was going to make it out of the area. So the area went to the district. And I was humble to find out I came in second place in the district. Why am I talking about this today and it's so dear to me? It's because I spent two to three hours to present a speech, on an average. When I started, it would be six to seven hours. And it went down. It got easier. As you do more speeches, practice makes it easier. Now I'm two to three hours. Improv speaking, it's even harder because you haven't prepared. But improv speaking is what happens to all of us in our daily life. I should have a PowerPoint presentation, but since we don't, and in Toastmasters, we have to be prepared. So today, I am prepared. I'm going to pass around the PowerPoint, okay? <laughs> And when giving an impromptu speech or talk, there are five things you want to focus on, and I'll pass it around. The five things you want to focus on, the first one is you need to listen. Many of our speakers have got up here and mentioned about listening skills. Jacqueline has done it. Lewis has done it a couple of times. And Patricia as well. The most important part of communicating is exactly what you're doing right now sitting down and listening. So the first part, it has to be to listen. When you listen, you're showing respect for the next person. Because unless the person knows that you're listening, they won't feel appreciated. They'll feel that you can't wait till you're done talking so they can talk. And you've been in those conversations when somebody's talking to you, and you remember that conversation when someone just answered right back to you before you even speak, talk, finish talking, right? That's happened to you. And you say, well, this person really wasn't listening to me. In improv speaking, you have to listen to the question they're giving you. Once you're done listening, you need to pause. I learned my pause from Patricia. If you ever see her give her, giving a speech, it's a treat. Pause is the most powerful thing you can do in your speech. Before you say on and get all stuck, just pause. The second thing that pause does for you is it allows you to think it through what you've heard when they're asking you that question. The third one is to confirm. Confirm means you go back and you ask the question. You could say something like, let me see if I hear what you're asking me. You want me to talk about how was my summer last week? Is that the question you asked? Now you go back to that and you begin to formulate in your mind what you're going to say. What you're going to say. Then you tell. When you tell it, look in people's eyes and be sincere. Every story I've heard here, the best ones are the real ones. Right? Real life, I tell you, the best movies are based on actual events. Because we can all resonate with what has happened with us. Right? It's happened to us before. That's why it's so important. And lastly, end it. End it. When you see the light is turning green and then the light is turning yellow, as soon as it's yellow, something Jacqueline has become a master at it. You saw it today. When she saw the green, uh, you may not have noticed, she noticed it, uh, but she did. She began to formulate her ending, not at this color, at this, at this color. So by the time it got yellow, she could pause and, 
And she could give the delivery of the message. She could do it then. It never reached the red. And that's very difficult to do. Easier said than done. But today, perfect example that she was doing that. Thank you for giving that example to everyone. Whatever you do, and I'm going to, again, try to visualize. It should be behind me, okay? <laughs> Whatever you do, first, don't apologize. If you're coming to the meeting a few minutes after, never say, well, you, you know, the reason I'm not prepared is because, <laughs> don't apologize. If you forgot your material, nobody will know about you. <laughs> right? Nobody's going to know you forgot your material. That's where you improvise. That's what improv speak. So don't apologize. Well, before I answer, let me say, and it's happening here, I've heard it. Some of the people I stood up and said, well, first of all, I want to say I'm sorry. No need to apologize. Just go. Go for it. Second thing is, back my place, don't ramble. No. That's happened to me personally. I've rambled in a conference call. Very embarrassing. About a year and a half I rambled. That's what I knew I needed to come to Toastmasters. By the way, I have conference calls in my job weekly. And I cover a subject for 26 other managers weekly. And they call me an improv speaking. I, again, I was not supposed to answer any questions. And they started just asking me questions. I was like, well, because you know it's important and it's important. I don't remember what I said. I can honestly tell you I don't remember, but I remember. And it wasn't, it wasn't fun. I got phone calls after. Are you okay? Did you, did you take something? The, good, the nice ones told me, are you okay? Right? Your real friends tell you, are you okay? The ones that are not your friends call you and say, hey, that, that was pretty interesting. I go, okay. <laughs> You're being gentle with me. And then don't invent. Don't invent. Now, sometimes we're going to ask you to come up with something, and then you have to invent. But most of the time... Try to use real life experiences when you're up here talking or when you're being asked to do improv speaking. You see, people can relate to you a lot better. It is refreshing to stand up here and hear Jacqueline say, I failed. Because we can all relate to having fallen. But here's the most important part. Anybody can fall. But she's gotten up. And that's the toughest part. Listen, I can give a flawless speech if I truly practice it. It can be flawless. But here's the problem. I learn more when I make a mistake. And I learn then, thanks to the evaluators, what I can improve in the next time. I really appreciate that camera right over there. Because this is what's important about this club and why it's so important in this club. You get to go back and you get to see yourself. And the camera does not lie. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, what, what comes out is it's what it is. And you get to see how many times you could have done something different, something better, and some things that you learn from yourself that you could do. Okay? These are the strategies that we're going to talk about uh, to be able to do improper speaking. First, you want to express an opinion. Right? Express an opinion, meaning you want to be able to make sure that you give examples in your opinions when you're improv speaking. And a lot of you are going to get to practice because right after this, we're going to have table topics. And all of you are going to get to practice what I'm talking about. Address cause and effect. When you're giving an answer, always say what happened and what could have happened. I woke up this morning, I got out of bed, I was ahead of time, but then I remember laptop where did I leave it cause and effect that got me to be five ten minutes later than I would have been and that's cause and effect when you're giving an improv answer use the cause and effect and then break the topic into components you want to make sure that you have a beginning a body and a conclusion even in your table topics you can do that and always discuss uh, uh, the past and the present and the future when you're doing this. 